authentic in this church. That's right. Yeah. 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 I, 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 and I'm not testifying. I just told my, my, my boyfriend, he, he said, I love your pastor because that's how he is all the time, 24-7. He said he loves the genuineness of the church. Amen. 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 So I just thank God because I can come up here and say things that yeah. we understand. It's yeah. here and it's here sometimes, you know, but I just thank God for just just this church. I've been yes. here 20 years, and I just thank God for just yeah. saying. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 Somebody told her she give God word. Yes. She give it to you straight yes. from the hip. Don't worry about the word. If you're here today, God got you here for a reason because he got something for you through her. And it's going to be everything. Trust me, it's going to be everything. So, the next voice you hear will be our first lady, my friend, my homie. That's my girl right there. She got your back. That's my girl. Minister. Denise Yvonne Tucker after Larry Live. Amen.
to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to say a word on your behalf. I pray, Lord God, that your word would go forth with power and authority and that they would know it's coming from you and not from me. I pray that it would prick their hearts, Lord God, and if there's anyone here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins, that they would yield and ask what must they do to be saved. Now, Lord God, I just pray that we would apply the word to our hearts and our minds and that in all things we would continue to know who you, you are the one in charge yes. and that we can do nothing without you. And, Lord God, um, I'm going to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For it's in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray with thanksgiving always. Amen. 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 So um, the, the subject or the title of this message today is Battling Through Bravery. Battling Through Breakthroughs. Amen? Amen. Now this this man, this scripture is a, a beautiful picture of what Christ can do for the mourning people of Israel and the ones hurting today. Isaiah 61 3 promises God will give us beauty for ashes in painful seasons. We all have painful seasons, don't we? The scripture provides hope to us when we go through the trials and tribulations of life. Our sorrows and our troubles can leave us feeling defeated at times. However, when we fully give ourselves over to God, our view of the trouble and sorrow of life changes. Amen. The circumstances may not change that we're going through, but the way we see them will change. How many of you have ever been through a battle? Some of us are going through battles right now. Amen? Amen. Battles come in many different forms and affects our lives in many different ways. They tend to cause us fear, which is not a spirit that the Lord has given us. And they also test our faith. But when we call on our Lord and Savior for help, the battles of life become building blocks of faith that actually equipped us for the battles yet to come. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. In other words, your faith is getting stronger while you're in the battle. Okay. You, you've all heard, you know, the phrase, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That's right. That's right. Well, when we trust God, it empowers us while we're going through our battles to avoid panic, avoid fear and hopelessness, and as we're going through it all, we become stronger. So no matter what we've been through or what we may be going through or what we'll go through in the future, it's really just the battle before the breakthrough. Okay, all right, all right. We've all had times. We've all had times we couldn't see ourselves around a particular problem, just like Israel did when they were trapped in the desert over in Exodus 14, remember that? Yeah. They probably never imagined that this massive sea was going to split, providing them a way to escape, mm -hmm. amen? Yeah. You see, God goes ahead of his people. He knows our battles far better than we do, and he'll fight our battles as he did for Egypt. You just have to trust him. Yeah. God promises us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. You believe that, don't you? And, and never means not ever, at no time in the past, present or future, on no occasion, not under any circumstance, not ever will God leave us nor forsake us. Amen? I believe that means our battles too. When we believe God's word, we learn that no battle we face is too difficult or too large for him. Amen? That's right. And if we all just sit back and reflect 
and play back the tape in our minds, we'll remember previous battles that God fought for us and the miraculous breakthrough afterwards. Amen? That's correct. That's correct. In studying this topic, battles and breakthroughs, a few keys come, key points come to mind. The pain, the patience, and the position. Let's first take a look at my first point, the pain. And that's the pain we experience while we're going through the battle and waiting for our breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Going through some battles can be painful. You know that, right? But we must first understand about pain. What we first must understand about pain is that it's not always about bringing discomfort. Pain can bring out our hidden gifts and talent when it pushes us outside of our comfort zone. It forces us to take a leap of faith and it can lead us to powerful results. Amen? Amen. Right. Just, just think of some of the battles you faced in your life. The, the battle of illness, yes, sudden yes. or prolonged. Yes, yes, the yes. battle of death, the death of yes. a loved one, a child, yes. a partner, or someone who was not even expected to die. Mm. The battle of rejection, divorce, separation, and abandonment. Mm. The battle of unjust criticism, yeah. you know, like jealousy. Yeah. Like they say, you think you cute, yeah. but it's not that you think you cute, they think you cute, amen? <laughs> the, the battle of hatred, anger, resentment, bitterness. The battle of physical loss, loss of a home, loss of a job, loss of money. The battle of an accident or some event that changed the course of your life forever. Wow. Amen? Amen. Amen? All of these things can be painful. But don't let the confusion of your pain cloud the clarity of the person it can have in your life. All right. All right. In other words, the pain has a purpose. Pain has a purpose. God is capable of using every bad pain to produce a very good purpose. Amen. You know that? Amen. To help us find our purpose, we must ask ourselves, think about this, ask yourself when you're going through pain, how could the story of my pain give hope to somebody else who needs to hear my story? There you go. Somebody needs to hear your story. Amen? Mind. How has my pain changed my attitude toward others who are suffering? You know, sometimes we, we look at people suffering, you say, oh, she's suffering with that guy going upside her head, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't feel sorry for her because you say it's her fault. Mm -hmm. But if any of us have ever been through that type of pain, uh -huh. we can help that person through their suffering. Yes, mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. That's right. We must pursue purpose that will outlast our pain. Our walk with God is a journey of ups and downs, and between the mountaintops of victory, there will be low valleys. We love the mountaintops of victory. It's the low valleys that we don't like. And the Bible teaches that God loves us. He works all things together, you know it, say it, for the good to them that love him. That includes the pain we suffer in our battles. You not, may not believe this, but our greatest battle, when you think about your greatest battle, it comes right before your greatest breakthrough. Yeah. So, so, so you know it's coming when you, you know, you got a big battle, you got a big breakthrough coming. Yeah, that's right. Amen? That's true. That's true. When God is about to break us off with a major breakthrough, the enemy always gets busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you better believe that every new level there's a new devil. Uh -oh. Wow. It's the job of the enemy to get us to turn back. Yeah. When you in the battle, he, he wants us to retreat, turn back. Mm -hmm. It's the job of the enemy to get us to surrender during a battle. He doesn't want you to get your breakthrough, but more so than that, he doesn't want God to get the glory. Amen. Can I share something with you? The enemy can't actually stop your breakthrough. Why? Because Jesus already paid it. He paid for your breakthrough already. And you already prayed for it. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. I, 
I know at times we may think God has forgotten us. Times when we, it looks like things are breaking apart in our lives. Times when we feel like throwing in the towel. But I'm telling you, those are the times that your breakthrough is coming. At times, you may look like you're going down in the battle and you might not make it. But I'm, I'm asking you and telling you, don't faint, don't give up, don't give in, don't retreat, just keep fighting. This is just the battle before your breakthrough. Your, your miracle is coming. It's coming. How do I know that? Because you carry the DNA of a king. Royal blood flows through your veins. You wear a crown of favor. You live with person, purpose, passion, and praise. That's how I know. Have any of you watched the media with, with, with Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II? And you saw all this royal stuff going on, how, how royalty is treated. It should give you a sense of who you are in Christ. You are a king's kid. You better know that. You better claim it. Kings' kids should never be intimidated by the enemy. That's right. That's right. Wear the whole armor of God. Yes. Stand bold as a lion or a lioness and tell the devil to get out of your way. That's right. That's right. If you do that, the chains holding you captive will break. The weapons formed against you will break. The oppression and depression will break. The hurt and brokenness will break. And your breakthrough will come. I agree with you. I agree with you. It is, it's all about what we do in between the battle and the breakthrough that determines where we go. And, and sometimes it seems like the breakthrough is taking too long. In that stage of in between, yeah, yeah. it seems like the breakthrough is taking too long, and we get a little impatient, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Which brings me to my second point, patience. Patience is something you need to have. Mm -hmm. Are you getting impatient for your breakthrough? Mm -hmm. Have you been praying for something so long, and it looks like nothing's going to happen? Yeah. We're told in our prayers that God knows the desires of our hearts, right? Yes. What's taking them then so long? To give us what we need. Amen? Mm. It's hard during those times. It's really hard during those times. Because we, we, we're we in a world where everything's coming quick. Yes. We don't want to wait for anything. No, no. We live in a culture of fast food, microwaving, Snapchat, Instagram, and all those other instant messages. Mm -hmm. And these things have caused us to be just a little bit impatient. We don't want to wait on God. We want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. You may think that God is taking too long to send your breakthrough, but, but God has his own timing. And we need to adjust to his timetable, not the reverse, right? I know a little bit about patience. I know just a little bit about patience in, in many areas. But when I first learned real patience, can I testify? Yes. Can I testify? Yes. Come on. Now, my husband and I, we were married when I was 18. He was 17. So I know that makes me a little bit of a cougar, right? Drana? You guys didn't know I was a cougar. <laughs> we married in 1972. And when we got married, of course, you desperately want to have a baby, at least within a couple of years. But guess what? Got married in 72. 1973 came, no pregnancy, no baby. 74, no pregnancy, no baby. 75, I'm trying to be patient. <laughs> no pregnancy, no baby. 76, no pregnancy, no baby. 77, no pregnancy, no baby. All the way up to 1983, 11 years. Had passed. Years. Eleven years. No pregnancy, no baby. This was definitely a battle for me. Yes. Here I am, a young wife yes. with a young husband, yes. thinking you're gonna have children, right. and it's never happening. It's not happening for me. So, so I'm praying, but I, I also figured I had to do something. So I went to the University of Pennsylvania Infertility. As a matter of fact, let me just remind you, when we were going through all that, all those years, you know, it was like, we felt like we were the Abraham and Sarah of our day. I felt like I was barren. 
All my friends had children. I felt God had forgotten me in that area. And my husband, he, he did mention a, a adoption a couple times, probably trying to make me feel better. But I just kept praying that one day my breakthrough would come. Now, that's a lot of years to be waiting. It wasn't until 1984 at the age of 31. You see why I said Abraham and Sarah? At the age of 31, that God eventually gave me what I wanted. A beautiful baby boy, also known as Larry God. <laughs> he was the breakthrough. But that whole experience taught me a lot about being patient and waiting on God. Wow. You know, I, I, I understand, I, I didn't understand it then. I didn't understand why God did that. Why God did that to me. Yeah. I'm like, but I grew to understand it. Yeah. I said, okay, although I asked God for a pregnancy breakthrough, you know what? He said, I'm not about to bless you too nuts with a baby. We were crazy back then. Martina knows it. She lived in the neighborhood. She saw us all jacked up. She saw us fighting. Shooting, cussing at each other, yeah. shooting and stabbing. And I was the one doing the stabbing and the shooting, to be honest with you. I was the one doing that. He always trying to show somebody now. This is this where she cut me. This is where she cut me. But, but if I had been a better shot, you wouldn't have Pastor Tucker as your pastor today. And I would have been in jail. Shot at the border one time, too. He was a, let me tell you, he was a force to be reckoned with. He, he deserved to be shot at. And cut. Back then he did. But, but you couldn't shoot him. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were quick. He knew how to dodge a bullet. God gave us our breakthrough after all that foolishness was out of our lives. He wasn't about to bless us with no baby. No bullets we were shooting could have shot the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't going to put no baby in the middle of that mess. Mm -hmm. He knows. So we need to be patient. I say all that. We need to be patient while waiting for our breakthrough because God knows past, present, and he knows the future. He's all knowing. Nothing escapes him. His timetable is different than ours. He's always on time. So instead of being anxious, just pray and surrender your battle to him. He'll take care of it at the right time. His time, not ours. He, he's never late. I know there's times in our battle that we think God came too late. You know, we say he didn't send a breakthrough at my timetable. You know, we think that. But he's not late. He had a purpose for the delay. Now, if you heard my story, don't you realize he had a purpose for the delay? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Remember the story of Lazarus. Amen? In John 11. Yeah. Jesus Christ knew his friends were, friend was sick and dying. Mm -hmm. He knew that. But he didn't go to him immediately. He didn't go until after Lazarus had died. So Jesus went four days later. That's correct. That's correct. The people all around... That at that time, and seeing that situation, including Lazarus' sisters, they blamed Lazarus' death on Jesus. In other words, had Jesus came earlier, That's right. Lazarus might not have died. That's right. Amen? That's what they said. But, but was Christ really late? You know the story. He wasn't late. He allowed Lazarus to die so he could raise him back up to life. Yeah. This way, the people would believe in the, in the power of God through Jesus. So it is with us. If God has delayed a breakthrough that we're waiting on, there's a purpose behind it. A reason behind it. We just have to be patient. He's wiser than us. Amen? The, the delay could be because God is saving us from some trouble. You know, have you ever been stuck in traffic and you're waiting impatiently and when you finally get up there to the seven, eight car pile up, people that die, you were delayed. He was trying to save you some, from some trouble. Amen? And, and that pastor would say, God might have been saving you sisters from Pookie and saving the brothers from Shania. <laughs> Y'all know some guys and gals you might have thought, that's the one for me. You know, and then when you look at the life they had with somebody else, you said, boy, I got the bullet. That could have be, been me in that miserable life. That's right. 
We need to thank the Lord for the unseen dangers that he saved us from. That's right. That's right. That's his business. His business is to protect us. That's Amen. What, that's what he does. And, and sometimes we think, we, we, what we think are, are delays are actually blessings in this eyes. That's right. That's right. God also could be testing our faith. If, if God is making you wait for a long time for your breakthrough, he's also testing you. He could be testing you while you're waiting. He might be trying to see how you're going to react and what you're doing or you're going to do while you're waiting. Amen? Amen. Because if, if patience could cause us to back, backslide, right? Yeah. You know, if patience could, we can go ahead of God and do it our way. He said that's the wrong way. And, and it also gets us um, distracted in our commitment to God. He wants us to just trust him. So be patient for your breakthrough. It's coming. Amen? Amen. Not only did I see the pain and the patience in my studies of this topic, I also saw the positioning, mm. which brings me to the third point, the positioning. Second Chronicles 20:17 says, you will not have to fight this battle. And that good news? Yeah. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, so, so this tells me that we sometimes need to position ourselves for a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough in your finances, your marriage, your relationships, your trip with your children, any situation in your life, this scripture is telling us we sometimes need to put ourselves in a position to receive a breakthrough. Amen. And I, and I love, what's Glory? I love the football analogy for this because Glory's a big football fan. And I know you might have heard it, where the quarterback's main goal is to advance his team forward uh -huh. towards a touchdown yeah. by throwing the football to one of his teammates, right? Yeah, right. In order to team the team to advance forward, the quarterback has to throw the ball, and one of his teammates has to what? Catch the ball. Amen. So the quarterback doesn't just throw the ball all willy-nilly, no. but he throws it to the teammate that is in right. position. Ah. Amen? Ah. Uh, likewise, if, if our quarterback was Jesus, the football was the blessing or the breakthrough, and we're all receivers, and we indeed desire a blessing or a breakthrough, we have to ask ourselves if we have positioned ourselves to catch. Well, we have been praying for. We have to ask ourselves that. Very good. There's, there's a lot of people that sit and pray, expecting break, a breakthrough and a blessing to fall from the sky right down into their lap. While they are sitting still. And even though I believe God could do that, he can do, he can do that. He, he has the power to bless however he chooses. He Amen. He but the more I experience life and the more I read the word of God, I am convinced that the most blessings and breakthroughs do not come by sitting still, but by you positioning yourself in order to catch it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Making this up, there's many examples of this in the Bible. Before Abraham could become the father of many nations, he had to first position himself in the land of Canaan. Yes. Before Esther could save the Jews from being killed, she had to first position herself in the king's palace. Yes. Before short Zacchaeus could see Jesus over the crowd, he had to position himself by climbing up the tree. Yes. Before Peter and the other disciples could catch a heavy load yes. of fish, they had to position their net on the right side of the boat. Yes. Before Peter could walk on water, he had to first position himself on the water. Before the woman who struggled with the issue of blood for 12 years could get healed, she had to position herself at the feet of Jesus. Before Jesus could reconcile us back to God and defeat the power of sin and death, he had to position himself on the cross. We are to bless and thank the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus, for positioning yourself on the cross for me. But when you are in position, you can't expect to get a better job until you have positioned yourself by going back to school or go to get some type of training in something. You go, once you, if you want to get a better job, then that, go start some applications, get some interviews, 
You can't expect to lose weight until you have positioned yourself in a gym or changed your eating habits. You can't expect to grow in a relationship with God until you have positioned yourself in prayer and study God's word. Just ask Ruth. How many of you know the story of Ruth? Remember Ruth? Ruth was hungry, but she didn't expect God to just drop food in her lap. No, she did. Though he could have. Yes, he could. But she positioned herself out on the barley field so she could catch a blessing. Amen? Amen? Yes, yes. Ruth verse 3 says that when Ruth started to glean behind the reapers, she just so happened to come to the field that was owned by Boaz. Right, happened to. She didn't happened to. know which field was owned by Boaz. She may not even know who Boaz was. She just started doing something in okay. one field, yes. and God directed her to the field that was owned by Boaz. Amen? Okay. All right, all right. She also, at the suggestion of Naomi, positioned herself at the feet of Boaz. Amen. Amen? Amen. So she positioned herself to be blessed. You know the story. She, he married her. You know, he was a man of wealth and um, a man of honor. And she ended up marrying. And she was also, as I studied, in the lineage of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. She was the great grandmother of David. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We have to do something. You know, we have to do something. We serve a God that is much larger than all the things we worry about. Amen. He's, Amen. Lar he's larger than that. Yes. He will take your something and bring it to your place of Boaz. Amen? Amen. There's a blessing and a breakthrough waiting for you. Yes, it is. Take your time. But sometimes you have to do something. And I'm asking you to position yourself for greatness. Yes. Can you do that? Amen. You want something? Position yes. yourself. We have to be like Ruth. You know, if Ruth had decided not to do something and start and hadn't gleaned in the field, she would have never met Boaz. Mm -hmm. If she had had been in a good work ethic and showing up late, she might have missed him. <laughs> you know, showing up late, she might have missed him. <laughs> she was a poor widow. She was living in a foreign land, away from her both birth family. But God saw her as important, and His plan for her culminated into her becoming. In the lineage of Jesus. Amen? Amen? My brothers and my sisters, if you trust God, he will break you off bigger and better than you ever imagined. Position yourself for a breakthrough. Amen? Yes, ma'am. You, you know what I'm saying? Don't just wait. And, and, and because I'm older, some older people think that it's too late to do things. It's, it's not. Really, I did a lot of things at an a old age. You know, I went back to college and got my degree at an old age. I learned to ride a Harley Davidson as I was 60 some years old. That's right. You know? So, so you, when a person says, well, I'm too old, oh, you're not. You're not. You're, you're capable of doing anything you want. You have to get to the struggle and position yourself to be blessed. Don't, don't sell yourself short. Struggling in the battles where most people give up because we get weary mm. and tired. But what does the Bible say? Be not. Be not weary, right? In well doing, for in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. So God is saying, don't get tired, don't get weary, and don't faint. I'm here. I got your back. I got a blessing for you. There are areas where you may have been facing the biggest battle, whether it's financial, physical, emotional, whether our battles with our job, your children, your marriage, your relationship, and for some, the battle is with their ministry. Amen? Amen. But whatever, if you don't hear anything else, whatever your battle is, God is about to turn your situation around for your good and break you off a serious breakthrough. Do you believe it? Yeah. Well, let me say, hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. You believe it, right? Hallelujah. And you know why you believe it? Because now you know the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. He's got your back. He's got your back. How many believe it? How many are trying? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And because of him, we always win, don't we? We always win. God bless you. Battle is breakthrough.